Welcome to U Ranch today, we're working on the Grand Caravan. This is the Mark V. In this particular video, we're going to be showing you how to do a front wheel bearing replacement. So, we're going to go from this to this. So, we've got some work to do. So, let's crack on. So, now we've got our car lifted up and we have the wheel removed. Uh, first thing we want to focus on is this, which is your axle nut. Now, one very important thing when it comes to the uh, axle nut, when you look at the official Dodge or uh, Chrysler workshop manual, they are very specific uh, in listing this nut as a single use item. So once this is removed, what you're meant to do is replace it with a brand new one. Now, of course, not everyone does that. Some people do reuse the old nuts, but like I said, in the Dodge workshop manual, they are very, very specific that you should not reuse it. Unfortunately, these are quite expensive. Uh, you're talking about uh, maybe 15, 17, 18 dollars uh, for one of these nuts. So they're definitely not the cheapest thing. And also it seems to be quite hard to get non-genuine ones as well. But if you feel you're gonna have a hard job removing yours, maybe you've got rust like we have here, then definitely you should look at getting one of these replacements uh, in advance. And we will put the uh, part number on the screen uh, for you. So you can either pick one of these up at your uh, Dodge or Chrysler dealer, uh, or we, we will also add some uh, Amazon links uh, into the video description below. So the removal of this axle nut can often be the worst part of this job. Sometimes these are really, really stuck on in there. So there's a couple of options uh, for getting these off. Uh, if you've just jacked the car up on one side, then obviously you're gonna have the wheel on the other side will still be touching the floor. And so as long as you've got the car in a uh, park, then uh, when you are working on this, if you're trying to get this off with like a breaker bar or something like that, uh, then uh, because the other wheel's on the floor, that will stop this being able to turn. But in our instance, uh, we're on a two post lift, so we've lifted uh, all four wheels uh, clear of the floor. So even in park, uh, this is still uh, free to turn. Uh, one wheel will move in one direction, whilst on the, uh, the opposite one will move in the opposite direction. So the ideal tool for getting this off is going to be uh, an air impact gun because with the gun, we don't need to worry so much about the wheel being able to rotate. But of course, if you don't have one of those at home, you're gonna be using a breaker bar for this. And so by far the best way, uh, if you've got the breaker bar, is to have the other wheel on the floor whilst you're trying to remove this. Uh, so that will automatically stop this wheel being able to uh, rotate. Another quick tip for you, if you're doing it the same way we are, if you've got a two post lift, the Dodge Workshop Manual uh, recommends that you get a second person to jump in the car and press the brake pedal down. So you can press the brake pads, it's obviously going to stop this uh, from rotating. Another option if you get really stuck, you can sometimes, uh, because these are vented uh, discs, you can uh, put a, uh, something in there and that, that will jam it in against the, uh, the frame there. And again, that will stop the uh, wheel being able to rotate. So if you've got several options uh, that can help you uh, get these off, unfortunately they are a little bit tricky. But the one thing that you must not do, as mentioned in the Dodge and Chrysler workshop manual, is you must not try and remove this with the wheel on and the wheel on the floor, i.e. weight on the bearing. So let's have a go at removing this. So what I'm going to do first of all is I've got quite a lot of corrosion and dirt and things in the actual thread of the, on the end of the axle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a wire brush and I'm going to clean out as much of that rubbish as I can. So obviously I'm going to get this nut coming down this thread. I want to remove as many obstacles as we can. So to help us out a little bit, I'm going to get some uh, penetration spray. Uh, I'm using Plus Gas here. Uh, but it's, there's hundreds of different brands, uh, Liquid Wrench, all that kind of stuff. Uh, WD-40, um, you can use standard WD-40, which is pretty good, uh, but they also do a specialist WD-40 specifically for jobs like this. It uh, can be picked up pretty cheap as well. Uh, but putting some of this on really does uh, help this out, help out. So what it does is it's going to seep into that thread just a little bit. So this often can be the difference between struggling for half an hour on a bolt and getting it removed relatively easily. So I'll try and get some in behind it and make sure I get some in on the thread side as well. And I'm going to give this uh, ideally at least kind of five minutes to really soak in and start doing its job. Put quite a lot on because I predict this is going to be quite stubborn. So for our axle nut what we need is a size uh, 32 uh, bit. Uh, this is an actual uh, axle nut bit. The problem with this is it's quite short and so when you uh, put, because this um, uh, the axle is poking through quite a long way past the nut here, when I put that on I'm only about two thirds of the way uh, up the nut. So ideally what you're going to need is a long uh, 32 millimeter uh, impact bit like this one that's got plenty of room uh, for that axle to come into the center. So you can go right the way to the back of the nut. Hmm. 
Uh, so as you saw on the, uh, the nut here, it actually started uh, quite easily, started uh, much easier than I thought that it would. However, as expected, the uh, thread pretty much all the way up was quite dirty, so you had to keep using that impact gun uh, all the way uh, along to eventually get that uh, removed. And uh, whilst we were doing that, we did have a second person in the car because we do have uh, uh, all four wheels lifted off, off of the ground here. Uh, someone pressing the uh, brake pedal, and you see we've got a little bit of movement. Uh, there's the, the place where the brake pad was, so it moved around a tiny little bit, but not very much at all. And hopefully what's happened uh, as this has come off, that would help clean this uh, thread up a little bit. So when we come to put our new nut uh, back on, uh, hopefully that should go on uh, down this thread a lot easier than it was getting the old one off. So next, what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that the axle is uh, loose, it can travel backwards and forwards inside the hub. Now, when we were doing the, uh, the impact uh, gun, uh, ours is uh, loosened off. As you can see, uh, we can move that backwards and forwards. However, yours might be stuck. Now if it is, a couple of quick tips for you. Um, what you've got to do is you've got to hammer that just so it's, uh, it becomes free. What you don't want to do is start hammering it straight on the end of the axle. Reason being is you could uh, kind of mushroom head this out a little bit, damage the uh, thread, and then when you come to put your new nut on, if you deform the metal by hitting it repeatedly, then you might struggle to get the new nut on. So rather than hit it directly with a hammer, if you do need to hit it, you can get a punch. You want a punch that fits inside uh, the center. You can hit it with a punch. Or even better, if you are replacing uh, your, uh, your axle nut, you can put the old one on, put that on a few turns, and then hit the nut. Because obviously it doesn't matter whether we damage the nut. And you just want to make sure that you get it so that you've got movement in the center. So our next stage is we need to remove our brake caliper and uh, to do that uh, we're going to remove the uh, two uh, main bolts, that's the bolts for the uh, bracket, uh, just on the rear. So looking from the rear, here's our two bolts, it's these two big ones right here. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, penetration uh, spray on these, just a little bit, they shouldn't be too bad, just to help me out a little bit. And these bolts here are size 21. Now to stop this spinning whilst you remove the other one, I'll just do that back in just a little bit by hand. So at the moment I've uh, removed the bolts, I've just tightened them back in uh, finger tight. Uh, before we move the caliper, I uh, just want to secure the, uh, the rotor here and make sure that the rotor can't fall off of the car when we remove the caliper. So I'm putting the wheel bolt on just by hand. Uh, as close to the uh, 12 o'clock position to, to the top as possible. And when you remove your caliper, make sure you've got a, a cable tie handy. We do need to uh, tie the caliper up uh, because on the rear of the caliper we have the uh, flexible uh, brake hose and we want to make sure that we don't cause any damage to it. So if your caliper is uh, stuck on, uh, maybe the uh, pads are compressed quite tightly, maybe you've got a slight lip on your uh, disc. Uh, if you put the uh, screwdriver uh, into the uh, vent, Sometimes get a little bit of a pull just on the uh, caliper just here, just to pull that forward just a touch, just a couple of millimetres, uh, just to open up the air uh, piston. And we need to get this uh, tied up and get it tied up any way you like. We've got a nice point just there, looks good. And just remember the reason that you're tying this up is you've got this flexible uh, hose here at the back and trying to keep the air pressure uh, off of that hose. So let's find somewhere where that will sit comfortably uh, with uh, little to no pressure on the hose. So now we can go ahead and get the rotor removed. So we'll get the wheel bolt out of the way and carefully lift the whole rotor away. So next we want to remove the uh, brake shield here. Uh, we've got three uh, little screws here. But, and I'm just going to put a little bit of the uh, penetration spray. Shouldn't need much, they don't go on very tight, uh, but we do have some corrosion in there. So as you can see, we now have really good access to our wheel bearing. And so the next thing we're going to focus on is going to be the ABS wheel speed sensor, uh, which is this uh, sensor right here, which actually goes into the side of our bearing. 
And speaking of which, before we touch this, we need to have a look at the options for the brand new wheel bearing. So just a quick note for you about the replacement wheel bearing that you're going to have to buy in in advance. If you want to buy the uh, genuine Dodge Chrysler ones, they are very expensive. You're probably looking at somewhere around the $470 mark per side. So to do a pair of them, you could well be over $900. However, if you're happy to go non-genuine, as we have here, you can pick up cheap uh, replacements. Uh, these were $90 for the pair, so you're looking at $45 rather than $470. So these are around one-tenth of the price of the genuine ones. Now, of course, being a one-tenth of the price, they're probably not going to last as long as the genuine ones. However, will the genuine ones last 10 times longer than these? Probably not. So it's up to you what your option you want to go for. If you want to go genuine, you're looking at about 900. These are on Amazon about 90, and we will add some links for these uh, into the video description below. So if you're interested in picking up a pair of these, then uh, please be sure to help support us here at New Wrench, and please be sure to use those links. Now, one very important thing when you're buying your uh, new uh, wheel bearing is you want to ensure that they definitely come uh, with the uh, cable attached. This is the ABS wheel speed sensor. You should find the vast majority, if not all, uh, should come with this fitted and the ones that we'll be linking to on Amazon uh, will be the correct fit for this vehicle and will also definitely have these fitted. If you are buying a different brand, uh, be sure that these uh, do come with it because it's really not worth trying to replace the old ones. Make sure it comes with the new sensors. So we can see our cable actually comes out the side of the wheel bearing here and comes up. Uh, we've got the metal bracket here, passes through and it also passes through the other end of the same bracket. And then it comes across here. We have another metal bracket uh, just here. So it comes through there, it loops down, comes back up, passes out at the top of that bracket. And then we have another bracket right at the back there. You see it passes down uh, through that bracket and tucked away up underneath there uh, is where we have our electrical connector. So let's get the first part of this disconnected. And push that out of the bracket. Exactly the same here. Coming across the second bracket, it goes out the back. And the rear bracket just here, exactly the same. Put it forward out of there. So for a little connector here, uh, just put a screwdriver in the back and uh, just gently lever it forward to release these uh, little plastic clips. Just push that forward. It can be a little bit of a fiddle. Just in front of the red tab there, it's a little bit that uh, you push and it should release this uh, section here. It's a bit stuck. There, there it goes. Yours is stuck as well, just come under there with a little screwdriver, just this little uh, section just here, you just need to lift that up. And then with that lifted up, you should be able to uh, pull the uh, two sections apart. You see just in the uh, centre there, I don't know whether you can see that, but just in the middle there's a little uh, locking pin just in there, and that's the uh, the little bit that uh, holds holds that in. That's so all you're doing is coming down the front of the plug, uh, if yours is stuck like ours was, lifting that up, and that will release this little pin in the centre. So here we can see uh, what's actually holding our wheel bearing in. We've got a bolt, uh, there's one bolt there, there's another one there, and there's two identical ones, obviously on the opposite side. Uh, they pass through the uh, hub here. You can see the ends of the bolts uh, just poking through just there. As we can see around the uh, edge of our wheel bearing, where, where it's passing through there, uh, we do have quite a lot of uh, crud and uh, corrosion. So again, I'm gonna get the, uh, the wire brush uh, on this, try and get this as cleaned up as I can. Uh, and then also put some pen, uh, penetration fluid uh, both on this side uh, and on the uh, heads of the bolts as well. And a good amount of our penetration fluid just to try and help soak in uh, around the edges here. Make sure we get the, uh, the ends of our bolts and we're also going to do the, uh, the heads of the bolts as well. So our next stage is we need to remove uh, these four bolts that are holding on the wheel bearing. But as you see, when you come around to the back, you haven't actually got much access to get a, uh, a bit, a socket on the rear there. Yes, you can push the, uh, the axle back to give you a little bit of space, but you still might struggle. 
So one thing we can do to create a little bit more space, we can actually turn the uh, steering wheel and that will turn this whole assembly in one direction. And that will give us better access uh, to two of the bolts. And once you've done those two, you can reverse that and bring it in the opposite direction and do the other two. So all I did there is uh, once the uh, hub was turned around, I put the old uh, nut on and just hammered that back uh, to get the uh, axle uh, in its uh, most uh, back right position. And then that will just about give you the access you need uh, to be able to get on your uh, 15, uh, 15 millimeter bit. Now we can go ahead and remove all four of these bolts and then we're going to turn the uh, steering wheel back to centre and then we're going to look uh, at getting this unit removed. So to remove the uh, bearing, there's a couple of ways of uh, doing this. What we've got to remember is we've got this seal here and actually sits slightly uh, inside the uh, hub. Uh, so often this seal can be pretty strong. So what we need to do is give this a, a few taps. Now the uh, kind of the easiest DIY way of doing it is just to grab yourself a decent uh, lump hammer, and give it a few smacks on the top, a few smacks on the sides, and then hopefully uh, you can break the seal and then this whole thing will come out. And the alternative to this is you can buy a special tool, uh, which is a wheel bearing uh, puller, a hub puller, uh, and that comes uh, complete with a slide hammer. Uh, they're not that expensive. Uh, they're only about um, 60 to $70 uh, on Amazon. We will add some links to those uh, into the video description, uh, but those can be really, really handy because what they have is they have a plate that actually fits over uh, the uh, lugs here that you would normally attach the, uh, the uh, wheel bolts to. And it has a piece that comes out of the center it's actually got a slide hammer on it and you actually pull it uh, backwards and it generates force directly outwards uh, and it's a much better way of doing it than, with it than the way that we're going to try it here so when you're hitting it from the top and from the sides that's literally all that you're doing you're kind of you're doing this trying to get it out millimeter by millimeter if you could pull it directly out that way that's obviously the ideal way because that's the direction that it wants to come out and that tool will allow you to do it uh, but we do appreciate that you might not have one but if you're doing watching this video in advance you might want to invest in one because they can make this job a lot easier So we're struggling to get our wheel bearing removed, so we're going to use the, uh, the proper uh, hub uh, puller kit here, uh, which includes the uh, slide hammer. The kit we have here is a kind of a more advanced version, uh, the basic ones you can get. Uh, use the similar principle, you won't need a lot of the uh, bits that are in the, this particular kit, and they're about $60, $70 on Amazon. So the way this works is we've got this slide hammer, and you pull it back, it creates the impact here. And so this whole thing is trying to pull the bearing straight out. So rather than kind of hammering at that bearing at various angles, we're now trying to pull it straight backward. You may have a gap.
So we've now got the old wheel bearing removed and we're ready to uh, fit the new one. Before we do that, you can see we've got quite a lot of uh, built up uh, dirt and muck all around the edges here. So I'm going to give this face uh, a good clean off and likewise on the inside here, I'm going to give this uh, a good clean uh, all the way around. And also, if so you've got some rust uh, on the end of the axle here, I'm going to give that a good clean up as well. A little bit of a uh, brake cleaner. I'm just going to clean up the uh, faces here. And I'll do the same. I'll clean uh, this with a little bit of brake cleaner. Put this onto the cloth, and then the same on the inside, just there. Now it's a good idea for the next time this gets taken apart uh, to put some. Uh, uh, this is a copper anti-seize uh, grease. And I'm going to put this around the uh, facing here, and also on the inner edge, just here. I'll also put a little bit around the uh, end of the axle on the spline here, but not on the uh, thread. And we'll also put a little bit on the spline just here. And all this is going to do, it's not going to uh, affect anything uh, during use, but these basically will help stop the uh, rust getting in and it will help when you take this apart again hopefully it will help stop these uh, parts from binding as i mentioned before don't put any on the threaded end so now ready to uh, fit the uh, new wheel bearing into place a couple of things to note uh, you may well have a, a washer uh, on the uh, end of the uh, axle just there uh, if you have make sure that that's back on and secondly to remember the orientation the um, the wheel speed sensor cable was coming out of this side, so I'm going to fit it on the same side. So I've got that in about as far as we can. Uh, we do have a tiny gap, that's quite a tight fit. Let me get these bolts through and start doing these up and that should start to uh, pull that back in. And manipulate it a little bit to get these uh, bolts in. Remember to push this back to help you. So now I've got the torque wrench, I'm going to torque this up to 65 newton meters. And for the second bolt, you don't want to do it on the same side, you want to do the directly opposite uh, corner, the diagonal opposite. And then we'll go down to the, uh, the next one on the same side. And then we'll finish on the, uh, the final one on the opposite diagonal corner. So on our new uh, sensor here, uh, we've got a different type of uh, clip. I guess these um, are designed to be fit into several different models. So I've removed the, uh, the old one so that we can uh, put that directly back in its place. And what these have, these actually have like a little uh, plate. We see it moving backwards and forwards a little bit there. And that slides into the clip. So there's the old one that I've just taken out. It's a little security tab at the front. So if I lift that up, push that backwards, I should be able to slide this into its place. And we'll take our original one, slide that down, just make sure that clicks into place. And our replacement actually comes with a bracket. Uh, that's this bracket here. So we're just going to pop the, uh, the screw off of there and replace this bracket. So we can now start routing this cable in. So the first grommet goes into this first hole. And the next one into the bracket on the top just here. And next we fit our bracket in here. And 
the official uh, torque for this is uh, 13 newton meters, uh, which is very, very little. So basically just, sn just uh, snug it up, make sure it's secure. So now I'm just going to feed my cable across and now we'll get this connected back up now. And we'll uh, push the locking pin back in. So now we'll feed the cable up. Line these two holes up. Push that back in. Make sure that's nice and secure. And then our final one uh, is this one at the back here. And so that's the routing of the uh, new uh, ABS cable all done. So that is essentially the wheel bearing replace. So obviously we're going to go ahead now and we're going to put this back together and take you through the, uh, the process for that as well. It's always worth remembering that it's always a good idea to replace wheel bearings in pairs. The reason being, if you've already got one wheel bearing that's gone, then chances are the other side is not going to be very far behind. So ideally you always want to do these in pairs. So now we need to go ahead and reinstall the brake shield. It's worth noting that this little raised bit actually fits around uh, the cable. So you just need to make sure that it's free of the hole and this little uh, cutout here, or this, this little raised shape, uh, will help you, uh, to help you do that. And then these little uh, bolts here, uh, they get uh, tightened up officially to eight newton meters. Just snug them up, don't over tighten them. So next stage is we need to replace the uh, disc rotor. Uh, before I do that, uh, I always like to take a bit more of our uh, copper grease and just put a very thin layer of it uh, just in here. Uh, again, this helps to stop the, uh, the rotor binding to the bearing. So when you come to take this uh, apart the next time, hopefully it'll be a tiny bit easier. And you only want a very, very thin uh, coating and you want to avoid getting it onto the uh, threads uh, for, your, uh, for your wheel nuts there. So making sure you've got a wheel and nut Ready, just going to offer that up, pop that in, and get our uh, wheel bolt on there, just to make sure that can't fall off. And what I'll do is keep this nice and uh, flush, put one in the top, one in the bottom. To make sure that it's not leaning uh, off of the hub uh, at an angle. A nice flat surface. So let's now take the weight of the caliper and I'm just going to remove the cable tie. So now just be careful with your uh, pads. Want to slide that in back onto the rotor in the correct position so that they line up on the back uh, ready for the new uh, ready for the bolts to go back in. Now I'm going to grab the torque wrench and I'm going to torque these up to factory spec of 169 newton meters. So next it's our uh, axle nut that needs to go back on. Now this might be quite tricky, so it's quite tricky to get off. Uh, so again you might want to get a second person uh, to um, put their foot on the uh, brake uh, whilst you're doing this to prevent this from turning. And I want to get this all the way back down to the base and then we've got to uh, torque it up to the uh, factory spec uh, 160 newton meters. You grab your torque wrench and remember 160 newton meters. And with that tightened up, just get rid of these uh, wheel nuts. So now you can go ahead, refit your wheel, and that is job done. So that is how to replace the front wheel bearing on your Dodge Grand Caravan or your Chrysler Town & Country. And if this video has been helpful for you, we always ask, can you at least take one second out of your busy schedule just to hit that like button for us? It really does help us out. Likewise, please do consider subscribing. We've got loads more great content for these cars just waiting for you to check out on our YouTube channel.
And finally, if you've really enjoyed the video or if we've helped you save hundreds of dollars by allowing you to do this job yourself, then please do consider hitting that super thanks option. So thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video.